Don't you just love physics? I sure do. But you know what I don't love? Doing notes for eight f***ing hours a day. Welcome to physics class, where you can learn physics without ever doing physics. In fact, the only objects in motion are textbook pages. And the only kinetic energy is between Chad and Jessica. We've been in the bathroom for 30 minutes now. We all know labs are dangerous, so we put them behind a screen so you never have to do them. That's right, folks. This is premium public education, where we dumb down government approved topics to get more subsidies. So put on your apron, strap on some goggles, and then take all of those things off because we're taking the physics out of physics class. All thanks to exorbitant amounts of your tax dollars. So I never paid attention in high school, mostly because I valued my time. But obviously that meant that I was screwed whenever there was a test. Teachers kept a pretty close eye on me. So for my upcoming physics final, I needed a better way to sneak in a cheat sheet. The test was over a collection of all the notes we'd done that semester, from which arbitrary words were missing. So the whole point was to basically memorize the textbook and then fill in the missing words. I know, it doesn't really sound like much of a physics test to me either. But what it does sound like is a challenge. Yup, I think I'm gonna do some stupid shit. Now, a better title for this video might have been How I Turned Something Dumb I Did As A Kid Into A Politically Contentious Cinematic Catastrophe or Dumbass Smashes Printer because he was out of good ideas for an intro. <laughs> but either way, this is a story of irony, rebellion, and most importantly, the physics of vibration. Still probably too long for a title. So what does vibration sound like? <clears throat> Sounds like a good time. <clears throat> okay, well, you know, okay, no, no, really. What happens when you reduce sound into vibration? Well, let me show you. So this electric motor is emitting the vibrations of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. See, the thing is, you can only hear it when you're directly touching the output shaft. Oh wait, sorry, wrong one. Okay, here we go. But what I'm really interested in is how far will these vibrations travel through a solid material like this plate? And once again, you can hear that because the microphone's touching it, but I can't hear a thing. Okay, so why do I care? Why is this important? Well, if I was gonna sneak a list of 100 words into that physics test, I was gonna play it through my teeth. That's right, bone conduction works by vibrating the bones in your skull, transferring those vibrations to your eardrum. So if I could find a way to make this smaller and Bluetooth, Bluetooth for your teeth. We'll call it blue teeth, tooth blue, new tooth, patent pending. I don't think many people would buy a Bluetooth mouthpiece, but it would definitely get me through the final. I say, let's build it.
Okay, I'll admit I had way too much fun making that last part look cool. But anyways, this is how it turned out. So I spent probably less than $20 on Amazon and it's basically just a Bluetooth module connected to a speaker amplifier connected to a drone motor. And as you might've guessed, it sounds like shit. I mean, it's not terrible, you know, it'll do the job, but it's not Bose quality. I mean, it's certainly impressive. Now you're probably wondering like, that's a lot of stuff there. Uh, where's all that gonna go? And the answer is in my mouth. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's not exactly a good idea. However, since this all originally happened back when COVID was a thing, I actually just glued it to the inside of my mask. I mean, not like they're gonna check in there. And they didn't. So the rest of the story is pretty straightforward. I wrote a script to go through all the PowerPoints and return a list of the underlined words. And then I ran those words through a text-to-speech reader. Once I had that, just threw the WAV file on my phone and I was ready to go. Almost. See, before the test started, everyone was required to leave their phone on the teacher's desk. Since this device only has a 250 milliamp hour battery, there was a risk it may die, causing my phone to loudly play out a list of the test answers. And I don't take risks, except for that time that I lit myself on fire for a YouTube video, but, but that's besides the point. I needed a kill switch. And that's where this comes in. This is a Bluetooth remote button for taking pictures on your phone. But what it actually does is press the volume down key. So if at any moment I get the little battery low warning, I can immediately mute my phone before anything happens. And that meant I was ready. I was about halfway done and everything was going according to plan until until I was rudely interrupted about my car's extended warranty. Now the ringtone was going to my mouth. I was fine, but the vibrate the vibrate was about to be heard by the entire class. See, I told you vibration was important in this story. And of course, if anyone's phone went off during the test, automatic fail. Luckily for me, volume down also doubles as mute call. But that was it. I only had volume down. There was no way to turn it back on. So uh, yeah, I ended up guessing on the last 50 questions. And I still passed with a 92. And honestly, that's not even at all impressive because this test was so easy that it would have been harder to fail it than it would have been to pass it. So as I wrap up what has been eight consecutive minutes of brain damage, I hope I've at least made a solid point about the abysmal circus that is our public education system. Now you see, I don't have all the answers and frankly nobody does, but I do know that if we let education continue on this dystopian downward spiral, then we may find ourselves in an America where our young scholars and engineers have been reduced to just men and women. Because after all, why teach how to make something like this and things like it when you can read about it in a textbook? I'm Evan Sawyer, thanks for watching.